Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today is the day that I'm finally working on building, as you can see, a VZBot Voron 1.8 bed Trident skirt kind of mashup. I, I it's I, honestly it's going to be considered a VZBot, which is Voron stuff, but it's mainly VZBot. So this was my. Voron Legacy that I like I promised I was gonna convert into a VZ bot and so far um, This is how far I've got as you can see I still got stuff from the last bill on the table didn't make sense I move it um, This is gonna be my last bill for a little bit um, as I'm just kind of like I don't want to get burnout building too much now but so Got the VZ butt gantry set up got the belt ran and everything um, I'm using a 300 millimeter bed with a 350 watt, 24 volt silicon heater and a 30 amp um, MOSFET to power it. So it's just easier to set up. Um, I don't have to deal with an SSR. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, I got the whole thing set up now. The only problem I have with this was, it was difficult to... All right, let me start with the negatives. The only problem I have is that I'm spoiled by the Voron setup in terms of just the instructions and, you know, and that ecosystem. So by comparison, it's not as easy to find everything, in, at least in my opinion. Like, um, I had to, like, ask a couple friends of mine, like, you know, people who watch my channel, like, where to find basically certain things like the end stop switch, like the Y end stop switch. Um, certain little parts, it was kind of difficult to navigate on the GitHub. Um, and then the manual, is it's decent, but it's not even close to what a Voron manual is. You know, it's not as detailed. So I would say that's the only downfall is that you got to be fishing for things um, to use. Um, so that that's the only thing, that's the only con I can really say about it um, is that hopefully um you know as as the community grow bigger um things just get a little bit better but i can just i can see the newness in the in the vz butt ecosystem that it's still um it, it still needs some work outside of that i did manage to find everything i needed um to get set up so as you can see i have the um uh, the hot end set up um the ever 2.4 carriage um this is specifically um, a mount for the MG and 9H rail. Um, I'm not gonna go carbon fiber or anything like that. This is not to um, go crazy with printing speeds or anything like that. Like, you know, if I can get a decent 15K, maybe maybe 20K acceleration, you know, uh, moderate um, for me, just to play around with, it'd be fine. But honestly, this is gonna be printing PLA and PETG all day. So if I can sit at about 10K, to 12k acceleration at 250 millimeter a second somewhere around that that mark or less i'm happy with that that's all i need from it it doesn't need to go gung-ho chasing gram going super light that's fun and all I, I let the other people do that <laughs> and then watch their videos and subscribe to their channels for that fun stuff for me this is just experiencing a different uh printer that everybody wanted me to build and um but like I said, the build process wise, it's easy. Like, you know, again, the, the, the parts, what I love about this is the parts are minimalistic. They don't require a lot of infill, yet still they're light and rigid. So that's really, really smart. That's a definitely a pro. Um, build wise, like putting this, the whole gantry together is pretty simple. Honestly, I would say this is much simpler 
then put in the gantry for the Voron stuff together. So I'll say I'll give this a plus in a positive direction that it's easier to assemble the VZ bot gantry than it is to set up a Voron gantry, right? So um, the Voron gantry is just beefy and very, very beefed up, very strong for what it's doing. Uh, but this is very light, you know, very light, very, very simple parts put together. Um, um, and it does make sense, especially for speed. It does make sense to keep everything light um, um, to uh, reduce the, uh, the stepper motor uh, resonance and such. So definitely, definitely a positive there. I definitely like that. Um, I'm using the V1.8 because, again, it's such an easy, easy, easy bed to assemble. I'm using the V1.8 with 12 millimeter rods instead of eight millimeter rods. I learned my lesson from the last time. Now, I could have gotten away with eight millimeter rods since I'm using a much, a six millimeter bed. It's much thinner. Um, this is, um, what's it called now? This is a TP5 bed. So it is very, very, very flat. Um, um, so I don't necessarily had to use 12 millimeter rods. I could have sticked with eight, but um, I just like, there's sol um, the rigidity of the 12 millimeter rod, so I'm just using it here. So it's very stiff, not a lot of flexing in it, and yeah, just easy to put together. So basically I'm using the V1.8 bed here. Um, I have the a dark plexiglass set up for the, for the, for the top cover. Um, I haven't mount any electronics yet, so I'm about to work on that. So as you can see, I have the trident feet and skirt that's gonna go around and then the bottom enclosed. Um, I also, I'm going to panel, panel in the side with glass, glass on both sides at the back is going to be wood, um, just a plain wood at the back to cover up the back and then underneath wood as well. So it's going to be covered except for the front. I'm not putting any panel on the front and on any panel at the top. I'm just kind of covering the three sides on the bottom just to kind of make it look, uh, more, you know, again, give it more weight, more rigidity, make it stiffer and just kind of make it look uh, proper. But outside of that, it won't be getting a top. Now I could mount a top, as you can see, there's space to mount a top cover if I wanted to put a top cover in the future. But right now, I really don't need it. I have my Vorons for that purpose to print ABS. So there's no need for me to uh, go gung-ho on this one. So this is a brown and black build scheme, as you can see. It's, it's really stiff, um, really rigid and heavy. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that I'm definitely building a BZ lot. And the experience so far has been mostly positive. Like I said, um, other than just trying to hunt for things, trying to find things, um, that was a difficult part, but everything else was just spot on, pretty easy um, to put together. Now, the amount of money I've spent on this so far, other than grabbing like raw materials, like I said, those are my panels to mount. So other than grabbing, I would say it in total amount so far, because I, I mean, I've, 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 I had pretty much everything else. Like I said, I have a ton of spear parts as you can see all over. So I'll say the amount I spend, including the panels, the panels, all the pan, get, um, getting panels cut between glass, wood, and plexiglass, that was $100 um, that I spent there. Um, and then the M4 bolts, because this uses a lot of M4 um, instead of, um, and some N3s, but I had spare N3s and stuff. But M4 bolts and then some pulleys. So in total right now, all I have on this, I spent on this was about $250. That's all I spent. I mean, this includes a rod too. The rods are not very expensive either. So overall about $200, no more than three. So for me, this turned out really cheap conversion for me because like I said, I had tons of spare parts, um, including the linear rails. I had just extra linear rails sitting around. So in total, like just round it up to, I'm just gonna round it up to about $300 for me to convert. So it was cheap. Now, if you're building it from scratch or converting yours from scratch, if you can source really well, uh, you know what, actually, just round it up to $400 actually because of the hot end. Um, I'm using the, um, the uh, Rapido from uh, Fetus. So I'm using the Fetus Rapido, not um, the iFlow, not the Ultra iPhone, but the regular iFlow. So if you add that extra hundred dollars, just call it, just call it four hundred dollars. Honestly, just call it four hundred dollars. So I spent four hundred dollars in total um, on this. Um, so that's not bad. That's pretty much a cheap upgrade for me. Now, for uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna convert this from scratch, if you can source really well. On the low side, it seems like about $800 if you can just find certain things, uh, use some existing things that you may have and you're a very crafty 
with your hands, you know, you got some tools, um, you may find yourself on the low side. If you try to go gung ho, like people, like if you're chasing speed, um, and if you're chasing grams, then you might be on the high side. You're probably like hitting Voron territory, which is, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if it's worth the money. In my opinion, I wouldn't spend twelve hundred dollars doing this personally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, you know, Voron is just a little different. I don't know why. Maybe I'm biased to the Voron setup stuff, just because the, just all oh, everything, the whole ecosystem work. You know, I was willing to spend a little bit more on a Voron, just because again, it's it's more tanky, it's more beefy. Everything's a little bit more heavier, just kind of a rigid feel to a Voron. However, this is this is more on the lighter side. Um, and so for me, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to spend $1,200 on it. But if you don't mind, if you're looking for the speed, um, and that's what you're primarily going for speed, you know, um, a lighter, a lighter gantry, you know, um, uh, easier setup, to be honest with you. Like I said, it's easy to set up, easy gantry. I would definitely say it's worth the $1,200 in that case, especially if you're going to be using it all the time, printing fast, printing like, mo um, not models, but like, if you have a lot of small business to print out certain things or um, if you're uh, prototyping, this this is perfect for that. The $1,200 would be well worth it for, for something like this to get the speed in and everything. But for me, owning so much printers already, it just wasn't necessary for me to spend all that much on it just because I have the Vorons to cover that that part. Um, this, Like I said, this is just my PLA PTG printer. So this this should do the job and, 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 and be consistent and, and, and whatnot on it. So in my opinion, if you're just trying to build a VZ bot because you think it's cheaper, it's not cheaper. It's definitely not cheaper. Um, you're certainly gonna need um, um, you're certainly going to be looking at eight hundred dollars to nine hundred dollars minimum. Now, if, like I say, if you want to chase a speed and want to go crazy, twelve hundred dollars right up there. If you're sourcing yourself, right? Because you're going to use a carbon fiber tube, you know, um, the aluminum, the aluminum um, uh, idler brackets, um, um, all that stuff. Yeah, it's just going to cost you. So, again, not a bad platform. I like it. I like the VZ butt. Not going to lie. Um, I like the way it's coming out, especially with the brown and black theme. Um, definitely not a black bad platform. It's right up there with the Voron stuff. Again, I think the Voron more leads to just a solid, heavier, uh, slightly heavier printer, just more beefier to print carbon um, to print a lot of ABS. Um, so that's why it's designed that way. Whereas this, you you can also print ABS with it. But to me, this is again, this is more for speed. Um, uh, you know, just speed. In my opinion, that the way everything is coming together again with everything just being light, it's completely going the opposite direction. This is more for speed, um, and and that's not a bad thing at all. Like, don't get me wrong, speed is nice. I'm just not all about crazy speed, you know what I'm saying? But speed is definitely nice. Um, so far, positive, positive reaction to this. I really, really like this. Easy to assemble so far. So, um, but this is just part one, just to give information, let you guys know that I'm working in the background. I'm sorry, guys, I don't post very often, but like I'm con like every time I get in a project, my mind just go crazy. Like I go straight into the project and then post when I can. Um, so, but yeah. So the next time you see this, it should be done. Like I said, it's it it was it's not that all that hard. Now I have another video coming out that I would like to show some of the hardware I use to to cut, for example, to cut my rods, to cut my aluminum, some of the tools I use to to build printers. And uh, maybe that will help out someone um, in my on my channel to see how I cut and measure and all this stuff and constantly getting it and doing it. Okay, so there's another video coming out where I can just show you all the tools I've acquired um, since I started building 3D printers, and then maybe that can give you a tip or two and help you guys out there that may want to build, start building your own or converting your own. But again, I'm gonna say this: the Tronxy platform, the X5SA, X5SA Pro. It's solid. It's solid. The fact that you can turn it into so many square computer, any com any printer that is squarely designed that look like a box, you pretty much can design it and build it out of, right? Um, which is what I like. Now, the only problem now is I would have loved to build a rat rig, you know. But again, the rat rig V Core Three requires thirty thirty profiles and and stuff, and that's I would have rather they did a V Core Three or at least a version of it in twenty twenty. That would have been sweet to build one, um, but you know it is what it is. I'm just not going to spend that much on on extrusion and all that stuff. Um, 
Because in my opinion, 30-30s are may, maybe bigger and thicker, but honestly, 2020 is plenty. Uh, in my honest opinion, 2020, 2040 extrusion, they can be stiff and rigid as just as well. Just depends on how you design the printer around it. And so, as you can see, VZBot prints perfectly fine and crazy fast speed without requiring 30-30. But that's just my opinion. But yeah, so, so far it's looking good. Just wanted to share this with you guys, give you guys an update. I'm working in the background. And so... Again, stay tuned. More videos to come, guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.